But what I really wanted to talk about is sort of the interesting relationship between Jurassic Park and my discipline, paleontology. Because I also was there to see Jurassic Park when it opened. I was 11 years old at the time. And most paleontologists of my generation have a Jurassic Park story. I actually have several colleagues who will unapologetically tell you that the entire reason that they finally decided, yes, I want to be a paleontologist, I'm going to go to school for twice as long as everyone else so I can go study dinosaurs, is because of this movie. So, but at the same time, you also hear your paleontologist grumping about the science that's presented in the movie. So we have this interesting, fraught relationship. And I thought I'd chat a little bit about that because there are some sort of behind the scenes things that don't always come out in these discussions. First of all, I would say that paleontology actually owes a great debt to Jurassic Park. Because when that movie came out, let's be honest, how many of you guys have ever heard of a velociraptor before the first movie came out? Okay, awesome. I'm glad I actually saw some hands. <laughs> but the point still stands. For many people, this was their introduction to this field and seeing a modern concept of what dinosaurs looked like. And for the time when it came out, the science was actually pretty good. Now, there were some things in there that kind of made everybody grumble. Things like Dilophosaurus. We actually have no evidence it was venomous. Sorry. But um, a lot of the behaviors were actually really good. Things like the entire scene where the T-Rex is chasing them in the Jeep and Ian Malcolm's thrown forward on the stick shift so they can't shift up and go faster. If you actually look at how fast they're going, that was roughly the estimate that scientists had made at the time of how fast the T-Rex could actually run. So there were fun little Easter eggs in there for the scientists and there were really cool sort of up-to-date research that was included. And we had an interesting thing that happened because of that. Many people became inspired to either just be interested in paleontology or maybe follow it as a career. We started to see a lot more dinosaur research. And many people have started describing right now as a golden age of paleontological research, and very specifically dinosaur research. So all of a sudden we have lots of new students, we have new funding opportunities, Amblin Entertainment and Universal actually took some of the money from the Jurassic Park movies and set up the Jurassic Foundation, which provides small grants for students and early career researchers, so they're actually directly funding this research. But the trick is, there's now new research going and we're full steam ahead and making new discoveries and finding new things, and sometimes we start getting a little grumpy because you have the push and pull of what's the correct science and what's the continuity for the movies? Is everyone going to freak out if they come into the second Jurassic Park movie and all of a sudden the velociraptors are feathered head to toe? Because they were. <laughs> but we didn't know that when the first movie came out. We'd figured out that birds were dinosaurs back in the 1970s with research by a guy named John Ostrom, who was studying Deinonychus. And when you see the velociraptors on the screen, you're more or less seeing Deinonychus. Like, Real Velociraptor is about turkey size. You'd still lose in a fight, it would just be more embarrassing. Um, but we weren't sure, and when we do paleo art, we try to be conservative with it. So if we don't have direct evidence of things like fur or feathers, we tend to leave it out. And in 1993, when the movie opened, we knew that birds fit in the family tree somewhere, but we weren't really sure where feathers first showed up. So, okay, scaly raptors, that's okay. But then, and this is the sort of timeline of it, then we start seeing publications coming out of China. All of these beautiful feathered dinosaurs of the J-Hole biota in China start being published in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s. All of a sudden we have tons of feathered dinosaurs and all of a sudden we know that most of these theropods, the two-legged meat eaters, many of them had feathers. Some of them completely feathered and definitely those raptors. So then you start hearing the grumbling in the background. It's like, why aren't your raptors feathered? Um, come on, guys. But it made sense for the time. So we, we have an interesting push and pull there because so many of us were inspired by the first movie and we want to keep that going. But really, at the end of the day, even when you do have some fun hiccups like that, it's still bringing people in. It's starting a discussion, which is what I'm hoping that we can have a little bit of time for before we all run up to the movie. And I'll certainly try to hang around afterwards if we have more questions after the movie.